It's the finals on Celebrity MasterChef. The celebrities will be pushed to deliver food on a completely different level. The president of the government is waiting for us. OK. Before one of them is crowned this year's champion. I'm with three professional sportsmen. But I'm not going to take a line down. It's battle of the sexes, it really is. I'm enjoying it so much. It's just about keep learning, keep learning, taking it all in and just maybe get you to the winner's enclosure. I'm my biggest competitor in this competition because I have the ability to turn out some great meals, I have the ability to turn out some terrible meals. I'll try my best. I'll find a way, you know, I'll find a way. I don't want to go from this competition now. I want to have a chance at least of trying to win MasterChef 2019. I mean, it would be, be incredible. One thing you can say about all four of them is they don't shirk a challenge. Mr Wallace, beware, this competition is going to be enormous. Congratulations and welcome to the Celebrity MasterChef Finals. I'm pretty sure you've all attended opening nights, posh do's. In fact, some of them may even been put on in your honour. Along, of course, with the bubbles comes canapes. On your bench, you have the ingredients and a recipe for two different canapes. <laughs> 10 portions of each, and you have one hour. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. Every single canapé has at least three different techniques that need to come together. It's a fantastic opportunity. What was the part you attended that had the best food? Oh, my last wedding, my second wedding. And the poshest party you've ever been? My wedding, second wedding. Cool, a lot happened there, didn't it? I was that drunk. We, uh, I went to my room to have a wee wee and the Beatles were in my room. But I didn't know we had a Beatles <laughs> tribute band. <laughs> Something in them canopies, I tell you. Bit, <laughs> the Beatles were in my room. <laughs> OK, listen, do you understand what it is you're making? I'm going to do an asparagus tartlet with quail's eggs and hollandaise, obviously, followed by... Chicken skewers and satay sauce. Now, that's the canopy I like. I've been to loads of parties, but not many posh ones. So, like, my idea of a canopy is normally like a bag of tortilla chips and some hummus. But I might have a little bit of an upper hand because all the boys are really big and I'm really small. They're giant people trying to make tiny little things, whereas I'm a tiny person trying to make tiny things. So, what are your canapes? Mini Yorkshire puddings with roast beef and horseradish, and then a pork and shrimp dumpling. A lot of these things you've never done before. No, everything's pretty new. I've made pancakes, and Yorkshire puddings is the same recipe, right? Nearly. <laughs> 20 minutes gone, 20 minutes have gone. Little bleedies, that's OK for you. I don't like anything little. Why? Little things is annoying. If I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat something that's going to fill me up at least. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Tell me what these canapes are, please. Smoked salmon, whipped goat cheese bellinis, and then I'm doing a mini fish and chips with tartar sauce. How do you honestly feel about finals of MasterChef? It's a competition. I know for sure Razor Reddick's gunning for me. Well, two great big men competing <coughs> about how tiny their food can be. Fantastic. Couldn't get any better than that. I want to crush Razor Ruddock into a pate and serve Razor Ruddock up to the judges. You know, Razor Pate.
what are your canopies? Individual fr French fruit tarts, uh, making a creme de patisserie, which is a custard, I think, from the looks of it. Never made custard. So, uh, this is a new experience for me. And then some scallops on a pea puree. If you do win this trophy, would you like us to put it on a ribbon and hang it out around you? <laughs> <laughs> I would feel much more at home if you did that. That'd be great, Greg. Thank you. Green, you've got tarts to fill, scallops to get together. Nothing's on a plate yet, and you've got four minutes left. Let's go, 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 go. Come on. Oh, I am as close as close can be with this. This is. This is going to be a close one. Goodness me. Little details, you know? It's not the strongest point. 90 seconds. Come on, let's finish up now, please. OK, time's up. Stop, please. Well done, everybody. Well done. Did you enjoy that? Nope. Mama's well, heart. I took your sauces. Right. Party time. Let's see these canopies. There we go. You have just catered for a party. Personally, I'm really impressed. You know, if that come past you on a tray, you wouldn't be surprised, would you? Look at it. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, shall we start with you, Vicky? Vicky's canapés are miniature Yorkshire puddings topped with rare beef and a horseradish cream. And prawn and pork dumplings with a chilli dipping sauce. Well done. They look professional. Bon appetit, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely lovely. I like the way you've done the beef, the little roll of the beef with a bit of horseradish across the top and some watercress. Classic. I think the wontons are delightful. Light pastry, sweet inside, and then you get salty and chilli from the dip. A good job, this, Vicky. Good flavours and well presented. What do you think about that? I feel very, very pleased. I feel a little bit smug. <laughs> <laughs> Neil has made asparagus tartlets with quail's egg and hollandaise and chicken skewers with a peanut satay sauce. Your chicken satay are a little bit inconsistent. But I think those tarts, the quail egg tarts, look fantastic. Your satay sauce is delicious. The marinade around the chicken is really wonderful. And the chicken's going beautifully and sticky. These little tarts I love. Really, really short pastry. You've got lots of lemon in there and a rich egg yolk. They are a delightful little morsel. How's that make you feel, Neil? I'm happy. I just want to tuck into it. I'm just looking across there, which I want to eat because I'm absolutely starving. Dillian's canapés are smoked salmon and goat's cheese blinis topped with caviar and mini fish and chips with tartar sauce. I know you don't like little things, but you must love those. You must love those. They look all right. They look all right. <laughs> Your fish and chips, crispy, well seasoned, I love the fact you've even put a little tiny bit of salt on at the end. And look, your chips are all the same size. A really nice fluffy like bellini with salty caviar, slightly salty but a slightly sweet smoked salmon. That is just lovely. Have I just seen a smile on Dillian's face? Yeah. I want to get home later, just get naked and jump around like this. <laughs> Finally, it's Greg, who's made seared scallops with a pea and mint puree and French tartlets filled with creme patissiere topped with berries. You should be really pleased with the presentation. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hey.
Your scallop is really nicely cooked. It's got a little bit of texture on the outside, slightly crispy, and underneath that, a lovely creamy pea puree. Your pastry work is perfect. It's just firm enough to hold the tart together, but it's crispy. Your creme pat is sweet and creamy. And then, of course, you just get the lovely flood of fresh fruit as you bite into it. I thought you were going to run out of time, but, you know, job well done. Thank you. That was hard work. There's a fantastic start to the finals. Absolutely brilliant. The next time we see you, it will be on the sun-drenched island of Tenerife. Hell? Oh. Tenas, get in. Tenerife. <laughs> <laughs> you are about to have your culinary horizons well and truly broadened, let me tell you. Tenerife, the largest of the Canary Islands. For centuries, this rugged, isolated landmass has occupied a unique place at the crossroads of the world's most important trade routes. Combined with a temperate year-round climate, it's resulted in a gastronomic treasure chest of ingredients and a unique cuisine to go with it. Welcome to Tenerife's Central Food Market here in Santa Cruz. Now, Tenerife has a food culture like no other. It found itself in the middle of a trade between Europe, the Americas and Africa. No other little island shares that sort of food history. We've set up two market stalls and today you are going to cater for the locals, doing traditional food from Tenerife. Guys, it's just three hours to lunch. I'd say get to it. Off you go. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Cheers, Bye. guys. To help the celebrities make sense of the local food are brothers and restaurateurs Mario and Fabian Torres. Hello, guys. Morning, guys. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? Welcome to Sunny Tarif. How are you? Ricky, you? You? you all right? Hello. Hello. You all right? Their restaurant, perched high above the Atlantic, has been in the family for three generations. Celebrating traditional Canarian recipes handed down from their grandmother. The restaurant's name nowadays is called El Calderito de la Abuela, which literally translates into our grandmother's uh, cooking pot. So it's a way of paying tribute to this great lady who did so much for us. So we are incredibly honored and gracious to, to her. Mario and Fabian have stayed faithful to many of their grandmother's favorite recipes, which today the celebrities will have to replicate for lunch. We need to go and buy the rabbits and the fresh goat cheese. Okay. Yeah. Let's rock. Go on, let's hop along. I've never ever um, eaten rabbit, and I've certainly never cooked with it. Some okay. of your finest you. bunnies, please. Yes. Oh, no. Nice, beautiful. <laughs> I used to have a rabbit called Thumper. Dillian and Vicky will have to cook two of Tenerife's most famous dishes. Rabbit Salmorejo, a lush red wine sauce seasoned with chili, garlic and local spices and fried goat's cheese topped with local palm honey and two of the island's most famous sauces, known as mojos. One made with coriander, the other with red chili. Hello. Hola. Hello. Um, we would like some queso mascarata. The finest goat's cheese. Yeah, that looks good. There you go. Thank you. Come on in, mate. Need to get some chill. Let's size the head. Where is? Greg and Neil will be responsible for making two fish dishes. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. Get a fresh. We get the one from from out back. Look at that one. He's still moving. Look at the size of it. How much is he going to cost us? For you, a special price, twelve euro for one kilo. 
special price. Well, it sounds special to me. Absolutely. I don't know if that's special or not. Is it really special, special or special? <laughs> the 12 kilo wreck fish will be used to make spicy red pepper fish stew. And a Canarian favourite rice dish featuring a combination of local seafood. Um, could we order some prawns? 16. So this is going to be the freshest, most beautiful fish stock ever. I can't Lovely. wait to make it. It's going to be brilliant. Thank you, sir. Gracias. Thank you. In both cases, we will need a really good fish stock, OK? So whoever decides, whoever's more comfortable prepping the fish... We'll let him do the fish. If he struggles, then I'll step in, OK? <laughs> Absolutely. Is that all right? Uh, that's that's, that's probably that's, uh, Greg seems to be the one. So OK, you, the fish are, then, are, right. are you brave? Yeah, brave enough? sure. Yeah. Definitely going to have to move quickly on this thing, because we're, we're in a, a warming uh, climate. And, I mean, it's... I mean, you can't get fresh in this, can you? Unreal. Meanwhile, Neil has realised he has a mountain of veg to prep for his rice dish. I've got to chop out about 100 different vegetables. Nightmare. I'm so stupid sometimes. I wish I was doing the fish now. In the other tent, Vicky and Dillian are joining forces on the rabbit dish. I took his kidneys out. I see that, babe, yeah. Look. You're almost enjoying this, aren't you? While Dillian prepares the meat, that's it. Perfect. Vicky gets on with the seasoning. I'm making a garlic paste for the marinade at the minute. This is apparently the official bashing garlic pose. I learned it from Fabs. Have you butchered a rabbit before? <laughs> nope. Well, well, growing up, my dad was a butcher, so I saw my dad um, butchering stuff. As Dillian finishes the meat prep, Vicky's marinade comprising chilli, garlic and thyme is good to go. I'll take that from here. Thank you very much, Fabs. Oh, God, oh, hello. Stop being a wuss. Not being a wuss. Massage that rabbit That's like it's it. your life depending. Yeah. All, the bits, all the little bits, all the little corners. And massaging the rabbit, Dillian. Dillian, we're meant to be a team here, right? It's OK. I'm encouraging you. With one hour gone, Greg's wreckfish fillets are portioned. Lovely. And he now needs to use the carcass and vegetables to make the all-important fish stock. Lovely. Meanwhile, Neil is still chopping his veg. I think we're falling a little bit behind. There is indeed a lot of prep. Can I just say, Mara, if, if, if you're sinking in water, you put your hand up for help, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Just put your hand up. If you need help, just put your hand up and ask. That's all you've got to do in life. OK, can you help me, Neil? Yes, I'm helping you, Chef. Good boy. I don't mind telling the whole nation I hate chopping veg. My hands are too big. You can't get them in these little triangle things. I don't like chopping veg. I, I'm a cook. I'm a chef. I'm not a chopper. No. <laughs> On the red team, Dillian is creating the rich red wine rabbit sauce. To give it greater depth, Vicky is making a spicy salmorejo paste. Now you would want to add all the, the powders. A teaspoon of black peppercorns. Right. There we go. Sweet paprika, two of those. OK, sprigs of thyme. Is that all right, Chef? Shall I get that in there? Yes, please. Mix it in nicely. Oh, yeah. We need to cook that for for about half an hour at least. OK. I am happy with that, Chef. Bazang. While the rabbit sauce reduces, Vicky and Dillian get on with making the traditional moho sauces. Moho is a sauce which is ground in a mortar and pestle made with chilies and spices and bread, if it's red, coriander, bread and garlic, if it's green, and it's got to be a smooth paste. Well, people always make pestle and mortars look so much fun when you're watching them on the telly, but they're actually quite tiring. This food is fantastic, isn't it? There's a lot to it. There's a lot <laughs> that goes into it, and, and the prep time and smashing it, you know what I mean? It's the, I'm like an army tank, top gun. <laughs> With just an hour until lunch, Greg is busy building up the layers of vegetables and spices that go into his fish stew. 
It needs a little bit more oil. OK, gently, slowly, 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 more, more, more. It's fascinating understanding and developing these flavours. It's fantastic. I'm having such a brilliant time doing this. Neil is happy to have the veg chopping behind him and is now assembling his rice dish. Make sure it doesn't stick. Are you still the paprika burning now? Throw the wine. OK, lovely. The colours in that cook are just unbelievable. Look at the colours of that. In goes the rice. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Are you hungry? Yeah. Neil, you seem pretty chilled out. Loving it. Are you? What about the chips? What chips? Yeah, chips are going with the rice. I'm all about flavours. He's all about chips. What was that? I just watched him do all the fish prep. What? I was watching him do all the fish Can't prep. Fish, that, 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 easy. Get on with it. Make those chips. Well done. We've got to make chips. <laughs> Wait, don't turn against me the first chance you get. I'm just putting it on to you. No, I'm not having that. We've got to make we're, chips. We're a team. We've got to make chips. It just keeps giving me all the jobs. Yeah. Chips, chips. You're doing the chips. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I love it. It's great. On the other team, Dillian is browning off the rabbit. We want to have it nice, crispy, golden brown, OK? OK. As soon as it's that colour, bang it in here and throw the next set in, OK? While Vicky moves on to preparing the most iconic of all local dishes. So I am making the goffia amassado. Goffio is an ancient grain originating in Africa, which has been a staple on the island for centuries. What you want to do now is, now that it's ready, you want to do these balls like this. Right. Imagine like a big pill. This is what links us back to the cavemen that lived in the Canary Islands. When they're hungry, they just get a piece, and that's your snack. It's amazing, isn't Glass it? Glass of wine and, <laughs> now you're and talking. keep working. Now you're talking. That's it. Guys, look, crowds are gathering. You've got 15 minutes before lunch. 15 minutes. Dillian and Vicky will be serving first. Accompanying their fried goat's cheese and moho sauces are the brothers' special spiced onion rings, which they haven't yet made a start on. We've got another problem here with the onions. Got no onions. I'll go and find some more. Can I have some onions, please? Okay, yeah. Yes. So these look different to normal onions. Is that just because they're picked? This is pointless, I know, yeah. Can I buy those, please? <laughs> I know, yeah. I do. To be honest with you, I don't really even speak English, so... Thank you very much, hon. Thanks for your help. Have a lovely day. See you guys. When I see you smiling like that, I think I'm going to get good food. <laughs> Are we going to get good food, Dillian? That's the plan. Give it a good shake. I feel like we're cutting it fine, but then I think that's kind of like par for the course in these sort of things. I don't know anyone who's like, yeah, we're doing great, we're just chilling out. <laughs> Come on, let's go, guys. Four onion rings, sauce on these, we're ready to go. OK, okay that's it. OK, honey and red sauce on these two. How are you doing there? One last one. One last one. <laughs> nice. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> hey, guys. There you go. The fancy name for it. I've forgotten. It's like a goat's cheese. Thank Thanks, lad. Bon appetit. Oh, John, that is really good. That goat's cheese is bouncy and salty like halloumi. And those mohos, the red one is slightly sweet, the green one is really salty. That is lovely. The bit I really love are those onions. Lovely texture, lovely flavour. I think it's a great little dish. Greg and Neil are up next. 
their seafood rice dish is traditionally accompanied by chips. You want them nice and warm? Oh, lovely. Their last task is to quickly fry off some squid. I'm happy, I'm happy. I was really nervous earlier on, but now I, I see things coming along and it's, wow, what a relief. Boys, 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 are we ready to go? Let's yep. do it. Right. Yeah. Smells absolutely tremendous. Make it look beautiful, mate. Yep, two, three, That's four. Arroso and Mourinho. Hola, Arroso a Mourinho. Arroz Amarillo. Am am right? Ah, there we go. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> That's a hearty dish, mate, isn't it? That is a hearty dish. Mm. That rice is packed full of flavour from the sea. Every single bit of seafood in there is lovely and tender. Sweet flavour of tomato, obviously, and sweet peppers. Hint of saffron in the background. Love, love, love the squid. Vicky and Dillian's traditional rabbit stew is ready. Listen, we don't want to leave these good people waiting, do we? No, not at all. Are we ready to serve the next one? We certainly are. Alongside the rabbit, they're also serving wrinkled Canarian potatoes with red and green mojos and the goffio mixed with almonds and honey. It smells delicious. Yeah, sauce it up. So that's my sort of food. Pleased with that, Dillian? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come yeah, on, yeah. let's take it, let's take it, let's go, let's go. Hi, lads. Are you all ready for some rabbit? Hello. Conejo, samarejo. Asamarejo. It's bunnies. <laughs> Enjoy! Oh, that sauce is absolutely fantastic. Rich with red wine, spicy with chilli. The rabbit is delicious. That goffio I really love. The sweetness works, actually, and it's like a heavy cake. Vicky and Dillian have done a great job. The flavours are fantastic. Good on them. Eating this is going to be amazing, I tell you. <laughs> Last course to go is Neil and Greg's fish stew in a rich and spicy pepper sauce. All those incredible flavours have all bonded. It's an incredible dish. Vegetables on top and then the sauce. You don't want too much oil. Even though it's an oily sauce, you don't want too much oil on it, OK? Boys, you have got to be proud of that. What a dish. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Hola. Chane. The sauce has been cooking for three hours. So the sauce. Good <laughs> luck. I think it's a really lovely looking dish. Oh. On a day packed full of good food, this may be my favourite. Really soft but meaty fish. Fair amount of olive oil, that's fine by me. I really like this. And I love the smokiness of paprika and the massive garlic in there. Loads and loads of sweet peppers. I'm with you, I think it's the dish of the day. The dream team. Come on, let's break, come on, come on. I'm really proud of our four. They showed loads of enthusiasm. They really understood the cuisine. I think they did a brilliant job. That was amazing what they did. That was mind-blowing for me. I've never done anything like that before. Looking at all the happy faces of the people that are eating it, fruit the bits. It was insane, the taste from the, from the start to the finish. The taste that changed was just clever people over here. That was canny, that, wasn't it? It's like Mr. Falkers versus Mrs. <laughs> is, that your, <laughs> is that your impression of me? Yeah. I'm Vicky. <laughs> oh, hang on a second. This is mine. This is mine. I'm Dillian. I don't really want to be here. I'm so hard. <laughs> that was a fine introduction to the great food of the Canary <laughs> Islands. But next, they are working with a truly great chef and cooking for some really serious people. 
Nah, it was great. I enjoyed that. Three hours, got it all done. Beautiful. Well, I almost broke your little hand. Beautiful. <laughs> It's day two. Today, the celebrity finalist will be pushed to achieve on a completely different level. Working under Tenerife's most highly decorated chef, Erlance Gorostiza, executive chef at the Ritz-Carlton restaurant, Martin Berastegui. His cutting-edge modern gastronomy, inspired by the best of local produce, has earned him two Michelin stars. The only chef in the Canaries to attain such an honour. They are about to see dishes through the eyes of a Michelin-starred master. Their food will never, ever be the same again. Welcome to the very elegant Grand Mense Hotel. There is a very special lunch here today. The lunch is being hosted by none other than the president of Tenerife. <laughs> and you are going to be working with Tenerife's most highly acclaimed chef. You've got three hours to lunch. Go and do us proud. Off you go. Each celebrity will be responsible for a course. Greg will start the lunch off with Chef Alance's modern interpretation of a classic Mediterranean salad. From me, Greg, this is one of our best dishes in the restaurant. I love it. So it's not to put pressure. <laughs> no, but there's pressure. There's now pressure, yeah. believe me, yeah. To make this dish, Greg will have to master a number of innovative techniques. The centerpiece is an intensely flavoured tomato tartare, made like a steak tartare, but then it's reconstructed into the shape of a tomato. I see, so you've, you've effectively recreated a tomato? Yeah. OK, right. Greg will also have to reconstruct black and green olives. One green and then we put one black. And master the use of liquid nitrogen to make flavoursome basil, tomato and anchovy pearls. I would expect to see this in, in a science lab, never in a kitchen, so my mind is well and truly blown at this point. <laughs> the pearls sit on a gazpacho sauce. And from the final, we put the tomato. Okay. I hope that you do better than me. <laughs> the things that I'm going to have to produce today, I can't, like, I'm struggling to get my head around it at this moment. I am terrified. Vicky will be in charge of the second course, Elance's playful take on corn with local shrimps. Sister. Toasting, toasting. toasting. The soldier shrimps are confit in a garlic, ginger and chilli oil and served on a corn-flavoured salmorejo sauce with coriander jelly. Oh, it's so cute. Pickled onions and an onion veil. Yeah? It's like a little prawn snow globe now, isn't it? And then we have what? here... What? Yes! You think that is real? Like 110%, mate. Fool anyone with that. <laughs> That's brilliant. The star of the dish is a spicy, savoury sweet corn ice cream. That's brilliant. What do you think? It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you like it? It's like, it's not food, it's like a work of art. But the most important is that it's really tasty. I'm no doubt about it. Well, yours will be. I hope mine's all right. <laughs> Neil is in charge of the main course. Erlance's unique take on pork with apple sauce, using the local Canarian black pig. I struggle. I'm OK cooking my presentation. No. Not the best. Today, I think you have a big pressure with this. Big eh? problems and pressure, yes. No problem, no. Eh? Because no, I think it's opportunity. The pork needs to be butchered and rolled before cooking in a sous vide for two hours. Just prior to service, 
it's cooked quickly in boiling oil. In a big pan, 210 degrees, one minute. Ensuring a crispy crackling. You see that the skin is coming more oh, crispy it, like now? You. Yeah. And tender inside. Well done, chef. Yeah? Have you done this before? Yeah. Once, mm, twice? Twice, <laughs> no more. Mastering the plating of a lemon cream is likely to be Neil's biggest challenge. Oh, no! <laughs> this is the final surprise. <laughs> Very good. And he'll also need to make the technically challenging red wine and quince jelly and apple cylinders filled with rosemary and cardamom mousse. Wow. Looks beautiful. Today is a good opportunity to be better with your plating. Yes, definitely. I need. That's what I need. Now, that's what a plate of food should look like. I've never been so close to a plate of food that looks so nice in my life. <laughs> How's Leon? How are you? I'm good. Nice to meet you. I am at lunch. Nice man. He's nice Thomas, to big man, to do a dessert, huh? Let's make some stuff. Yeah? Dillian will be finishing the lunch, making a Lance's version of a traditional Canarian afternoon tea, bananas eaten with biscuits. How is coming with you with the pastry? No good. No good. <laughs> but today, we must change this. Okay. This is a special mold that we make, and if you see in the middle, mm -hmm. it's like a banana. Yeah. The banana is made by carefully molding and freezing a white chocolate mix. OK. Yeah. Before being filled with a rich banana cream mousse. The plate is finished with a base of rich tea biscuit cream and a perfect quenelle of Irish liqueur ice cream. This hands is not so delicate. Mine's is for destroying things, it's not for making pretty things. <laughs> and it's only to destroy. I'm looking forward, I will try my best to make you happy. I know. I will try. There's nothing delicate about me. Nothing delicate about me. But I'm willing to learn, and I'm very ambitious, and I work hard, and I'll give everything a try, man. There's just two and a half hours until the important lunch guests arrive. And all the celebrities have a daunting amount of prep to do. There are so many little stages. Greg's first task is to painstakingly peel, chop and spice his tomato tartare. He's managed to create an awful lot of, of flavour, texture and taste coming from, predominantly, a tomato. It's mind-blowing. The mixture must be carefully transferred into round moulds before being set in the freezer. This is a very cold freezer. Next, he moves on to the deconstructed olives. Greg has got to deconstruct a green olive, a black olive and a tomato and make spheres. John, what is going on? That is enough work for a banquet, let alone one dish. So this is going to be the centre. So I've got to turn these into olive-shaped olives, freeze them, and then wrap them again in a new olive skin. Cool, I'm not sure what's wrong with the guy. Just have an olive. They're delicious as they are. Across the kitchen, Vicky's making a start on the base for her spicy corn ice cream. Egg yolks, sugar. To give the ice cream its spice, Ahi, or chilli sauce, is added to the mixture. I think this chef literally marches to the beat of his own drum. I'm totally out my depth. I think I'm pushing the boat. I want to have a bit of rum and raisin ice cream. This is corn and shrimp, man. It's just not your normal night out, is it? You are a bit worried about it all. I'm completely out of my comfort zone, and I don't even know the flavours, really, which makes us unsure that how would I even know that it's OK when I taste it, do you know what I mean? I get you. Well, all the food you've always cooked for us, we've always really liked. Thanks, John. Believe, with a big B. Capital B. That's it. Vicky is finding it really difficult to navigate herself around that recipe and is quietly confused and actually looks a little bit down in the mouth. Oh, no. I stirred with too much enthusiasm. I don't know what to do because I've lost quite a bit and I don't think I'm going to have enough for everybody. 
I might have to add some, might have to make some more. Over in the pastry kitchen, Dillian is also making ice cream. So you gotta put this and mix it quickly, cause the milk is hot. Um. This is therapeutic, actually. <laughs> His next task is to combine almonds, butter and vanilla to make a smooth biscuit mousse. I don't want to make the chef proud. You know, I want him to say, you did a good job. That's good enough for me. There's just 90 minutes until lunch, and Neil is still deboning his pork. But when you've got big hands and little bones, it's not as easy as it looks. Big fingers. Neil's a little bit slow with that butchery, but that's fine. Methodical is better than mucking the whole thing up. Well, there it is. There's my first baby. With his pork in the sous vide, he turns his attention to the apple cylinders, which must all be identical in shape and size. They're all having a bath, like Sunday night when I was a kid. Everyone gets in the bath Sunday night together. Same as all my food. It's two o'clock, and today's VIP lunch guests are arriving, led by Carlos Alonso Rodriguez, president of the Council of Tenerife. The other five guests include a hotelier, senior tourism officials, a wine historian, and one of the island's leading chefs. For Tenerife, for our gastronomy, for our history. There's now just 40 minutes until Greg has to serve the first course. These are the skins. So I've got them all here. So I've got the black olive, green olive, and then the tomato. I have so many things on the go all the time. And then soon, everything's coming out of the um, freezer to then be dipped, to then be left to sit and... Oh. OK, let's go. Have you noticed in that kitchen, all the banter has stopped? You've just got four serious contestants focusing on the job because they know if they don't, they simply won't get it done. This is a showstopper, in it, making sure this little guy looks as much like a piece of corn as possible. I was making the banana, white chocolate banana. I'm going to freeze it now, see how it turns out. It's the moment of truth for Greg's reconstructed olive spheres and balls of tomato tartare. Ah, oh, what do you reckon? They're round. Yeah, I think it's good, huh? They look OK. So these are the skins. Olives have come out pretty awesome. I'm pretty happy with them. The green ones, maybe not quite as good as the black ones. They look about as olivey as somebody like me who's deconstructed and reconstructed an olive is going to look. On the main, Neil's also making progress. Finishing all the garnishes that go with his pork dish. I'm getting it closer and closer a minute. The pigs are boiling away, I've made the pig gravy, my shallots. These are hard work. It's just hard, you can't get them all the same size. You better be everything the same, but all shallots are different sizes, so just non-stop me the chef. I'm making the corn samorejo. Thought about that for pronunciation, eh? So I've just got to get all the ingredients, get it all mixed together, and then slowly add oil. I'm creating almost like a mayonnaise. I think that looks really good. I think that looks really good. Hello? Mr. President? Yes, absolutely, sir. Yeah, lunch will be on time. And beautiful. Yes, of course, sir. Yes, of course. Um, lunch. 
This is the bit that we've all been waiting for. The liquid nitrogen. With just 15 minutes until service, Greg's last job is to make his cream of tomato, basil and anchovy frozen pearls. Oh, oh. Uh, no, no, it came out a bit fast there. Go on, Greg. <laughs> it's only the president, Greg, don't worry. <laughs> it's only the president. It's quite technical inside of it, so it doesn't just come out in a big splodge. You are a professional, eh? <laughs> I don't know about that. I think in this plate, maybe seven, eight different techniques they use, yeah. The president of the government is waiting for us. OK. Very different, I think, because it's like a gazpacho jelly. I suppose the presentation will be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Surprise. You are happy at the moment with the blading? So far, so good, yeah. It's incredible, isn't it? How many bits are going on there? It's just extraordinary. That is fabulous. President is waiting. Come on. When you finish, you need to ask for the waiter. Yeah, all good. OK, waiters. Service, please. Good job. That was hard, hard work, because what he creates is art, not just food. And mine looked a bit like it. And I'm thrilled a bit to that. Absolutely thrilled a bit. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Greg has made gazpacho with basil, anchovy and tomato pearls, deconstructed olives, topped with a cherry tomato. I think it's uh, something like uh, gardening your, in your house, no? Crunchy. No. No? No. You break into the olive and it's liquid and it tastes like an olive. It was amazing. It's like a carnival in, in the mouth. I love it. Completely. I finished my plate completely. <laughs> <laughs> my word. That plate has all the flavours of a tomato, olive and anchovy salad. Technically brilliant, and the flavours are absolutely wonderful. Next to serve is Vicky. The people always say chefs are more crazy than the rest of the people, but I think, <laughs> Vicky, you are more crazy than me. <laughs> Come on, Vicky, eh? we need to go more quickly. Eh? Of course, of course, co-chef, right, OK. One by one, no. Yeah. Put all. All of them? Yeah. Mini ice cream corn cob, soldier shrimp, and translucent red onion. It sounds impossible to me to mix ice cream corn cob with uh, shrimp and uh, red onion. Let's see how it looks. Look at that. Right, I need my ice creams. Pretty happy, they look amazing. Just nori there. It's like doing your eyebrows. I feel like it's more like a, a game of operation. Remember that from when you were young? We gotta go, we gotta go. Right, okay. Everything okay? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. Yes. Yeah. Service, please. Thank you, guys. Well done, girl. Yes! Good job, Vicky. <laughs> Thank you so much for all your help. Thank you. Thank you. I'm absolutely knackered. For a while, I was so completely overwhelmed and frazzled that I couldn't see the dish. Luckily for me, it came off all right. I just hope they like it. Vicky has cooked soldier shrimps with corn salmorejo sauce, red onion, and a corn cob ice cream. This kind of colors and combination about this, I love it. The texture of the ice cream, but you see the corn, it's uh, something that surprised you. I've never had corn on the cob ice cream before, but I thought that it worked very well um, with the shrimp. Like a chef, I have to say, uh, this is a, a really good plate for me.
crunchy bits of corn inside, creamy corn cob across the top, flavour of onion in different ways. Very good. Incredible, incredible detail, incredible cooking. Well done, Vicky. Move your hand. Only your hand. Next to plate is Neil. Oh. Oh, no, come out too slow. <laughs> Look at that one, man, that one. That was unlucky. Fabulous! Come on, mate, don't give up. Oh, perfect. Oh! Not bad, eh? Not bad. Not bad, eh? His lemon cream plated, he must now caramelise his shallots in orange and honey and quickly crisp his pork in boiling hot oil. It's crispy? Yes. Crispy one? Yes, no? Yeah, it's very nice. Okay. But everything's looking good. My food's always going to taste nice. It's just a plate, you know. Looks beautiful, the blades. Apple is very sweet, and the Canarian pig is very tender normally, and I think it's going to surprise us. It's the smartest plate I've seen you do, Neil. Oh, Look I at know. that. I'm enjoying this. That. This is good fun, I'm telling you. Taos in the middle. Look at that. Wow. Service, please. Well done, Nate. Thank you very much. That was hard. I'm quite proud of my spinning plate with the lemon thing going. Oh. It's the first time I've ever, ever, ever tried to make food look like that. And I just don't enjoy it. Neil has made canary and black pork with spiced red wine and quince jelly, orange honey shallots, apples with rosemary and cardamom on a spiral of lemon cream. <laughs> The meat was crispy uh, outside, but inside was not dry. And also, the combination they did with the fruit make the dish more fresh. It's like an explosion of uh, flavors inside. And if you mix the solid wine with the pieces of pork, it's, it's pretty nice. That pork is just absolutely melt in the mouth. And that yellow spire is really sharp, like you're licking a lemon. And the whole lot combined is nothing short of heavenly. Last to serve is Dillian. To ensure none of the key elements in his dessert melt, he must plate next to the dining room. So two, two Michelin star, eh? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you're you so much. You're a super cook. Yeah, very good. You remember Dillian? Yeah. We all have had many bananas, many biscuits, and the combination is quite simple. So I'm sure the chef is hiding something and let's see what's the surprise. What's left to go? Just the ice cream. Yes. Well done. Well done, Julian. Julian, yes! Go on, mate. Waiter. Last one. You got Sit. him, you got 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 him. You got him on the ropes. Come on. <laughs> Service. Service. Good work. Million. Thank you, Chef. Thank you for you. Thanks. I'm stressed now. I'm going to eat all this ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Dillian has made banana and biscuits. A white chocolate banana filled with banana cream, a biscuit crumb and mousse with Irish liqueur ice cream. Good presentation. It's quite amazing. Oh, it's hard. <laughs> mm. I think none of us imagined that the banana was going to be chocolate. Amazing taste. The biscuit was uh, under the ice cream, and uh, the combination was amazing, wonderful. 
the main part of this dessert that reminded me of my childhood was inside the banana. This is typical flavor. The other ones was a little bit more imagination. I love it. I really like it. Delicious. This is a proper fun dessert. Really like the flavors of the biscuit and the ice cream is fantastic. But the star of the show is that banana. <laughs> Well, I think we think that it was a very great job you, you did today. We never thought that you were able to cook in this way the, the local product we have here in Tenerife. So congratulations. Felicidades. Fantastico. It's been an absolute pleasure cooking for you. Thank you for having us. It's very nice. Thank you very much. Bravo. 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 Good to meet you. Today, we watched our four celebrity contestants raise the bar. From good dining to absolute fine dining. All four of them should be really proud of themselves. We're all absolutely buzzing. This is a whole different level of culinary skill that I've never experienced before, but I will take an awful lot from. Pork dish I cooked today was just the nicest bit of food I've ever tasted. It's like painting a picture. It's a piece of art. It's amazing. I'm made up with how much I've, I've learned and what we've managed to achieve. I feel as though I've immersed myself properly in the culture. For the first time I've come abroad, I really have. Yeah, it's been good, you know. A few interesting ideas. You know, I might take a few things from here to the next round to head into my own dish. You never know. Absolutely smashed it. Well done, everyone. Brilliant. Back to the MasterChef kitchen, because the fight is on for the final three places. Oh, oh well, well done, done guys. Everyone. That was brilliant. We little Tenerife team. <laughs> Next time, oh. the four celebrities cook off for a place in the final three. I can't argue with delicious. Before facing their biggest challenge yet, the chef's table. Mentored by MasterChef The Professionals judge, Monica Galletti. Eyes on everything. Not going to miss a beat. In my eyes, that is a dish that's cooked by a professional chef.